Let's talk about scene lights next, also known as parametric lights. Those are the things that you can create inside that studio, like a point light, a distant light, and a spotlight. Distant lights kind of gone out of favor a little bit because we now have HDRI, so I'll be focusing on point lights and spotlights. And you can create them just like cameras or primitives with the menu in that studio. And you can use them to great effect. Know that under the hood, I'm kind of looking ahead here, under the hood they're actually mesh lights, as we'll soon find out. We'll talk more about a different way of setting up mesh lights in the next video. But for now, let me introduce you to an assistant that I've recently made on the DAS store. This is my ArtStation page here. Her name is Dazelle, or we've, we've decided to call her Dazelle. And the background is done in Photoshop, but the rest of the lighting was done in a way that I'm going to show you now. So we have several light sources here. This is what we call separation, much like this here. So that sets the character apart from the background. If you had a dark background and you had a dark haired character, then there would be no separation. You wouldn't really know where the character begins and where he or she ends. So there's all kinds of tricks around that. This is the scene I'm going to show you in a moment, and we're just going to use her as an example, because she looks so much nicer than a sphere. And in the end, we want to use these lights with uh, character. So this was a bit of hexagon here. We'll talk about that later in the course. Let me show you what she looks like and what the scene looks like and where the lights are currently coming from. So this here is a mesh light. That's a plane that emits light. We'll talk about that in the next video. And these three here, they're all spotlights with varying intensities. You can see that this one here has a wider cone than that one. This one has got much, it's got much of a smaller cone. This one's also got a wider cone. So a spotlight is a thing that emits light and shines it into one direction. And then a point light is a thing that works much like an old fashioned light bulb in the ceiling. It's a point that emits light into all directions, like a candle. Let me go and delete literally everything from the scene except for the character. So this is all we have left. This is another camera here. Let's go and remove that as well. So much like before, the filament draw options node is now showing us a HDRI that is inside the scene. Let me go and take that HDRI out, not actually on the environments tab this time. I can just use the filament draw options node for that, that we've learned so much about in a previous episode. I'm going to go to my parameters tab here under filament draw options node under environment. I'm just going to go and take this down to almost zero, actually zero, so that the HDRI doesn't interfere with the scene lights I'm going to show you now. Let's start perhaps with the point light. And let's bring that in. That's under here under create new point light. There's actually two that you can set up, point light and linear point light. I believe that is an overhang from the three delight days. I mean, currently the point light and the linear point light are exactly the same. I believe in three delight, this one doesn't have fall off the way this one does. This one has logarithmic fall off and this one has linear fall off. But either one of them will work fine. I'm going to use the point light. I'll say apply the default settings, hit accept, and that will now create my point light in the center of the scene. And that's the little icon that I get for this point light. Let me go move that up. And you can see that it's already having an effect, even in the filament preview. I'm going to go and bring that forward. Control F to focus in on that. And I'll go and have a look at what this does to her face. If I go and put that directly in front of her, that's not going to be great. Maybe I'll, I'll put that here. And maybe she's in a cave or something and she's going to look at something like a, like a fire or whatnot. There. So this is how the point light looks when I bring it in. The point light, much like the HDRI, can have its intensity set as the filament draw options node translates this for us so that we have an accurate preview. And that's now under the scene light scale here. Do you remember that? We set the environment intensity scale on here and that will change the look and feel of our scene. We can do the same with scene lights. And if we move that slider, I can see that they either become brighter or less bright. If I set this value to zero, then they don't have an effect on our filament viewport at all. So I don't really know what the correct value is here because I need to really see this side by side with iRay to be able to make that judgment call. Something to be aware of. I'll leave it on the default five for now and then go and switch my viewport over Actually, I'm going to go and switch my second viewport on. 
side by side comparison both on the perspective view and let me go and switch the second one on to iray and then we'll see what the correct translation value is there Right. In iRay, we now see that the HDRI is also active. So even though I've not taken it into account in filament, I still see it in my real scene. So duh, I'm going to go and switch that over under environment and switch that to zero. I hope this makes sense so far. And now we can go and see that the filament viewport describes my scene light as slightly brighter than it comes out on the iRay viewport. So back to my scene light scale here. And let me go take that down to maybe two or maybe even one or maybe even something like 1.5. So that's almost like an accurate representation in filament that we get in iRay. So now I have that value. Much like we discussed the environment intensity value, now I have my scene lights value. And for the distant lights, we had another value. If we wanted to use those, we could adjust that here just so that we get an accurate filament preview. Let's talk about the properties that the point light has. And we'll just watch both viewports and see what happens. So with the point light selected over on the parameters tab, we have several options here. I'll close the general down. There's a display options here, but the ones we're interested in are under lights. That can also be expanded. We have a shadow type here. That's less important for us because in iRay, everything casts ray traced correct shadows anyway, because it's an unbiased render engine. But if you wanted filament to cast shadows, you can switch this on. Either deep shadow map or ray trace will work. They both do the same thing. If I switch this on, then my point light will cast shadows. And we'll look at this in a moment. I'll leave them off for now because this is literally just for the filament preview and not for iRay. Under area, I can set my light geometry. So even though it is called a point light, I can change that to something else. I could make that not a single pixel emitting light, which is, a, which is what a point light is. I can also make that larger. I can set that to something else like a disc or a rectangle or a sphere or a cylinder. Under height, I can change the size of something that isn't a point. And render emitter is, do I see this light in my render or not? We'll look at that when we look at a slightly different light geometry. Under photometrics, I can set the actual intensity of the light as well as its light temperature. So temperature is the color of the light. The outdoor sunny day is kind of 6,500 Kelvin. Uh, fluorescent light is about 4,000. And then an incandescent light like a light bulb is about three, three and a half thousand. Anything above 6,500 will make your light look a little bit bluish. 6,500 is kind of whitish with a blue tinge, 4000 is a bit of a yellow tinge, and then it goes further down into the red. The top here, luminous flux, is the real intensity. So the default is set to something unbelievably tiny, and we usually, to make this light work, especially with things like spotlights, we need to increase that by 10 or by 100. So you can do that in two ways. You can either type in the value, like say 10,000, hit enter and then you'll see the effect that that has on the point light it's much brighter you can also use the slider of course drag it up or drag it down that'll have that same effect or alt click to bring it back into its default position but you can do something even cooler and that is if you wanted something like say we had 10,000 and you wanted the light to be twice as bright and you don't want to fiddle with the slider and you don't want to type in 20,000 and enter because that's like that's like six key presses and maybe that's a bit too much for you. You can also go to the end of the number with the right cursor and then type in as if you're multiplying something so you can do maths in these fields as well. That's very cool. Works in every field across Das Studio. So you can say times two and then hit enter and that will also double the intensity of the light. There we go. That's how that works. And it works with other things as well. It works with the uh, division as well or addition. So if I say divide it by five now, like that forward slash five, enter, then that'll be a fifth of its previous illumination. Or you can go say times 10 and then make it 10 times as bright. It's kind of nice to be able to know these little tips and tricks. I think this one changeling chick taught me this one, so I, I really appreciate that. I'm going to go and leave the intensity here on, say, 40,000 and just move the light forward a little bit so that it loses its intensity. Well, it doesn't actually lose intensity. It stays as bright as it did before. But by moving it further away from the object I'm illuminating, it will illuminate the object less bright. So it behaves like it does in reality. I'll go and move in on my model here. 
and just have a look at the light quality now. Maybe we'll do this just in iRay. So let me go and move this over to a single viewport again. And switch this viewport over to iRay. And I'm still having my point light selected. And let's talk about the effects of light geometry on my scene. So notice the shadows underneath her face. They're very harsh and in her eyes and in her ears. And that's because the light is being emitted from a single pixel, like a point. And that gives extremely harsh shadows. If I wanted to make this softer, I can just increase the size of my geometry. And that happens under here, under area. And I can change this from a point geometry to something like a disk. Disk is like flat and looks like that, of course. And if we go and give that studio a minute, this is why you know rendering this with the primitive is actually much, much faster. Um, I can see that the shadows underneath her chin look a lot softer. It's another one of those tricks. If you have issues like this, there's several ways to speed up preview renders. And we'll talk more about this. Usually what I would do is I'm going to go and switch off the hair. That is a lot less geometry that needs to be rendered there and transparency. And the other thing that you can do is change the character from their current subdivided resolution to its base resolution. Makes them look a little chunkier, but also means that Das Studio doesn't have to calculate quite that much. But without hair, we get to see a much softer shadow underneath the chin now. If that isn't soft enough for me, I can go and leave it on disk and change the height parameter here. Height, if it's a disk, it'll adjust the diameter so you don't have to worry about width. So if I change this from 10 to 50, watch what happens in the scene. The light still is as intense as it was before, but it is now spread over a much larger surface and the light quality as such changes completely. So now what we used to have with the point geometry looks completely different. Look, this was the point geometry, very harsh shadows here, very intense. And then if we change that over to a disc, the size of 50 millimeters, then we see that she actually reflects that disc in her eye. So these are now catch lights that are being reflected here. So maybe 50 was a bit too much. You can change that back down to something like 20 and then play around with this and see what light effect you like. But that is kind of, that's kind of an interesting thing to know about. If you go around here, eventually we will see that this is actually the disc we've just created. That is what's become of our point light. So be aware of that. As I change that size here from 20 down to 10, then this is really what it does. It changes the actual light emitter there. As I said, it is technically a mesh light, which is a surface that emits light. Uh, just we get to adjust it under these properties here, which is kind of nice. But if you were to render this now and you wanted to, you know, maybe frame it up like this, you don't want to see a black disk in the in the viewport here. You don't want to see that in your render. Thankfully, there's a way to disable that very quickly, which is with this option here, render emitter. It's switched to on by default, but if I click on it, then it'll be off. And that means the light itself is still being rendered, but the emitter itself is no longer visible, which is kind of cool. Two-sided is another one of those effects. If you select that, then that disk is going to emit light to the front or to the direction of the normals as well as the other direction. That is disabled by default. Let me go and switch the render emitter on because it is actually a nice visual representation of what this looks like. So if you wanted to make adjustments to this, then it sometimes helps to have that visible. And this is basically why that option exists. So if you want, you could also change this from a disk to something like a rectangle. Once again, visual representation. Uh, the catch light in the eyes will be different. The light quality is going to be changing as a result of that. And now the height and width parameters are both active. So if you wanted to change this into like height five, then it becomes like slimmer. And maybe the width is going to be now 50. So now it becomes like a light strip. And, you know, play around with that and see what the light quality is when you do that. So technically, our point light that looked like a candlelight or a light bulb is now really a directional light that has a lot of power that we can adjust here. So that's kind of the beauty of these parametric lights. And I use them all the time. I tend to start with the spotlight. So let's use that next. But it'll have exactly the same parameters here. Just in addition, it also has an angle that it emits into and we can change that angle. One other thing I wanted to show you quickly, that's under the light 
heading here, we also have an intensity slider. So you can also use that to set the light from its default 100% to all the way down to 0% or all the way up to, I believe, 200%. So that's something that you can use for fine adjustments. I tend to leave it alone and just use the photometrics tab here to adjust the intensity. But if you wish, then there is another slider that can override that or work in tandem with the photometric setting. You also have a color setting here. So this is a little bit like what I talked about in the HDRI. If you wanted to give your light a tint that isn't governed by the color temperature here, Oh yeah, that is, I'm going to show you this as well when we talk about uh, spotlights. You can go and just set this to a different light output. So if I wanted to have a purple light, then I can set that to purple. And then my model is being shown at with something like this. So imagine she's sitting in front of a laptop and she's reading something, you know, that comes out or she's watching a movie or whatnot. Then this color value will change the color of the light. And that's kind of cool. All that from a point light, kind of cool, huh? Let me go switch this back to white. And while we're talking about color, actually, let's have a look at the color temperature as well. Why don't we do that? Under photometrics, here's temperature. So 6,500 is what this looks like. If I go and switch this to 4,000 now, deliberately, then you'll notice that she's getting a bit of an orange glow. So that's when the sun sets and when it rises. This is what the light starts looking like. And then eventually it goes in increments over to something like this. And then I think on bright sunny days, it could reach something like maybe 8,000 even sometimes so that you know if you if you increase that value it just goes subtly bluer i think you can go and increase that to ten thousand is the max that you can set but you can make it seriously small like 500 degrees kelvin we wouldn't really get that in reality but because this is 3d everything is kind of fake so you can actually put that in it's like maybe she's she's dazelle from hell now crazy stuff so usually this is never being set lower than I think 2500 in reality. This has come, these lights exist. So I tend to use values between either this or slightly lower, like around 3200, maybe 4000, 4500, depending on what the effect is that I'm after. And also depending on the scene and the skin tone. So sometimes like in this particular character, I think she works better with a slightly bluer tone. That's what the very accurate color temperature does. Let me go and switch this back over to filament quickly and delete my point light and show you what a spotlight can bring to the party and how I like using that.